Hi there, uh, my name is David and I will be your Linode developer advocate for this video. In fact, this video is part of a series that I've partnered up with Linode to show you guys a little bit of kind of semi self hosting using Docker, kind of getting familiar with Docker and that sort of thing. So in this video, we're going to continue this series. Uh, in the past, we've looked at getting a Docker server set up with Nginx proxy manager and portainer. Then we looked at things like uh, password managers and note taking apps and to do lists and uh, all kinds of stuff. And in this video, uh, I wanted to kind of bring things down just a little bit, simplify things, and help us get a little bit organized by setting up a dashboard where we can kind of put all of our links to all of our different hosted services in one uh, place so that it's easier to access them uh, basically from wherever we are. So in this video, what I wanna show you how to do is set up Flame Dashboard. So this is what my Flame dashboard looks like uh, for, for my daily use that I've got set up on my local server here. Uh, yours won't look like this initially, but there are ways that you can do this with some style sheets and that sort of thing. Um, and I will show you how to do that, not specifically uh, how to write the CSS, but where to go so that you can write your own CSS to modify it to look however you'd like it to look. Uh, but basically it kind of breaks things down into applications and bookmarks. You can edit these, you can put these in manually, or if you want to, there is an option to uh, to let this connect to your Docker socket and uh, have it pull things in that way. I like to have more control over it than that. And so I actually usually don't even put the Docker socket line in and we're not going to in this video, but I'll show you where it is, where it goes, that sort of thing. So again, this is kind of what it looks like. And if we come into here, um, we can kind of see, we, we can change our theme a little bit and we can look at our app. And right here we can see that um, there's authentication built into this so that you can um, basically make your changes that nobody else will be able to modify unless they're logged in as you. I really, really dig it. That's why I really like this dashboard. Okay, so here we are, we're logged in. Uh, and when you log in, you can see that you're logged in. You can see when your session will expire. Uh, it's, it's a couple of weeks, it looks like. Uh, of course, we've got our more information about uh, the app and things like that. You can check for updates. Uh, again, we can go over here to theme. We can change some of that. Uh, our general settings here, we can change uh, things like how things are sorted. Uh, do we want to pin new applications by default? Do we want to open applications in, its, in the same tab? Bookmarks, kind of the same thing. Which search engine do we want to use? They've, they've added several different ways you can search in here, and I love that. And then do you want to open the search results in the same tab, true or false? Or you can add a new search provider if you want to do that as well. Uh, over here, we've got an interface tab. Again, just more customization, configuration, things like that. Uh, you can uh, you can have it uh, greet you differently depending on what time of day it is. Uh, there is stuff in here for weather. Um, there is stuff in here for, again, the Docker uh, configuration as well as Kubernetes. There's a CSS option over here as well. And again, this is what, um, what my CSS looks like in order to get us to, to what we're seeing, well, behind this on the, on the homepage there. And of course we go back to app, we're brought back to here. So let's go back. And again, this is what, uh, what my dashboard looks like. And of course, all of that CSS gave me this. So uh, adding applications is actually pretty easy. We can just click on applications. Uh, here we can see all of those. We can click add or edit. Let's click add. We can give it a name, we can give it an app URL, uh, app description. Uh, you can uh, use an app icon or use your own app icons if you wanna do that. And of course there's more information here. Uh, there are references, you can click there. And uh, hopefully, there we go. Uh, you can search for things in here and put the icon name in here. So let's do, uh, let's just type in server. There we go. So we might click on this. <clears throat> Um, and then uh, it, we would just type that in, like so, our app, like that. Um, and then we'll just say server, uh, and then server.google.com, because I don't care. Uh, and then my server test, and then add a new application. And then we can close this. Do, do, do. And then where, where, where is it? Oh, there it is, right there. So here we can see that it added that icon right there. We click edit. Um, we can come over here to server. We can actually change the order of these by just dragging them around. Uh, so let's click edit. Uh, if we wanted to though, we could switch to a custom icon upload and, and select a file from our own computer here uh, so that we could have um, 
you know, my custom icon, if we come back over to here, you can see that I've done that for my Proxmox stuff there. <clears throat> bookmarks are very, very similar. Uh, you can add categories and bookmarks and you can edit categories. So I've got web links, media acquisition, infrastructure, wiki, media and flame settings, all as categories. And then I've created uh, bookmarks within those categories uh, just to keep things uh, organized a little bit better for my own use case. Uh, that's, I mean, that, that's basically it. Of course, I, I've got weather coming, going on right there. Of course, uh, it is raining here right now. So that's why we're seeing that. Uh, but that's basically the, the gist of Flame Dashboard. I've been using it for a long time. I uh, even covered it on my YouTube channel, but I thought this would be a good way to uh, introduce you guys to it as well to help organize your own Docker server. So, okay, so let's take a look at how easy it is to get Flame Dashboard set up on your existing Docker server. We can come over here to the hub.docker.com page, and right here is the Docker Compose that we're going to we're gonna use kind of the basic idea of that for this, or you could just use it exactly like it is here. Uh, but basically this is all we're gonna use is just that. So what we'll do uh, first is we'll come over here to our dashboard. Uh, we're gonna to go to domains. We're gonna open up the domain that we wanna use here. And uh, here we can see all of the different things that we've, we've made videos about in this series. Well, mostly. Uh, we're gonna add a new C name for this. I'm just gonna call this uh, dash. And then for my alias, I'm gonna type in at so that it will automatically fill in the domain name for me. And I'm gonna click save. Okay, so now that we have our uh, domain name kind of doing its thing in the background, getting itself all kind of set up, let's take a look at getting this installed on our existing Docker server. There are a couple of different ways we could go about doing this. Uh, the first way would be uh, via command line, or we could do it th through Portainer if we wanted to do that. But uh, let's do things through command line just because it looks a little cooler on screen. So uh, what we're gonna do is come over to here. Actually, I lied. What we're gonna do is come back up to here. Uh, we're going to open up our Linode, and then we're going to come over here where it says SSH access. We're gonna click the little uh, copy icon right there, come over to our terminal and uh, go ahead and get logged in. And then I'm gonna clear my screen. And then if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I like to store things in a certain uh, kind of folder structure of uh, going to CD space slash home slash uh, Docker. And here we can see the different applications that we've got in here. So I'm going to make a new directory, mkdir, and then if, uh, I'm just gonna call it flame, and I'll do a cd into flame. And then we're gonna do a nano, whoops, docker compose.yml. And that's just going to uh, create a new folder or new file for us. And then I'm going to copy uh, my, my, uh, my modified docker compose uh, file here. So we've got a version 2.1 Docker Compose. Our service is going to be Flame. We're going to use uh, this this person's uh, Flame with the latest tag on it. We're going to name the container Flame Dashboard. Our volume will be home uh, slash Docker slash uh, uh, Flame Dashboard. I'm actually going to go ahead and just actually change that from Flame Dashboard to Flame. Uh, just we're not creating uh, unnecessary uh, folders in there. We're gonna put this on port 5005. Our environment, uh, we've got a, a, an environmental variable of password. Uh, basically you can change uh, right here where it says uh, password uh, to, to whatever you'd like that password to be in order to modify your dashboard. So you'd put that in there. Uh, and once you've got uh, your password set up the way you'd like it, uh, our restart policy here is uh, unless stopped. And of course that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're just gonna fix that little bit of, uh, of formatting. And then we've got our, our network. Uh, basically we want all of our Docker containers to be on the same network so that Nginx Proxy Manager can communicate with them more effectively. So uh, in the original video, we actually created the network that we're gonna use here and we called it Nginx Proxy Manager underscore default. So we're telling it, hey, connect to this. And then we're saying, hey, this already exists. And we, we're saying that, or we're, 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 we're dictating that by saying that the external is true here. So so once we've got all of this set up the way we like it, we can press Control O and enter and Control X to save and exit our Docker Compose file. Uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, Docker dash Compose up dash D. Uh, the dash D is for uh, for uh, detached. So basically, if we didn't run it detached, it would uh, everything would happen here in the terminal. And as soon as we close the terminal, uh, the Docker container on your server would stop running as well. So we run it detached so that they aren't connected in that regard. So go ahead and press Enter here. Okay, so we do have uh, a bit of an error here on line 12. Uh, so let's see, on line 12, column 26. Oh, there it is. It doesn't like uh, all of the all of the spaces there at the end. Let's make sure there aren't any anywhere else. Little formatting every once in a while will cause us some issues. 
So we'll go ahead and save and exit again, and then column 16 again. Interesting. There we go. Again, sometimes formatting will just ca cause some problems. So you fix the formatting and then we can deploy it. And while it's doing that, uh, it's gone ahead and pulled everything that it needs to run. So now that that is done, let's head over to Portainer and take a look and make sure that things are running the way we would expect them to run. So what we'll do is we'll come back over here to our Portainer tab like we uh, set up in that first original video. And then right here is our Flame dashboard and we'll click on right there and there we go. There is what this looks like when you first set it up. So that's why I spent some time to to write my own CSS to to make this look the way I wanted it to look. So let's uh, let's take our next step and actually put this on a domain name. So in order to do that, we're going to come over here to our Nginx proxy manager instance again that we set up in that first video. What we want to do first is go to our SSL certificates, click over here where it says add SSL certificate and then click on let's encrypt. For this, we call this dash.dbtech.tips. We'll hit enter and we'll test our server reachability. It's reachable, so creating certificates should be possible. So we'll click close. Uh, we're going to uh, click on I agree and then click save. Uh, we'll give that a minute and it will generate an SSL for us and get it stored on our server. Okay, so now that is done. We can actually see dash.dbtech.tips right there. So our next step will be to go to hosts, proxy hosts, add a proxy host. Again, we're going to type in dash.dbtech.tips. Of course, you'll, you'll, you'll type in your uh, subdomain and domain, not mine, uh, because you don't have control of it. So we'll press enter again. Uh, our scheme we're going to leave is HTTP because the container doesn't have uh, uh, its own self-signed certificate in it. So we're going to leave it as HTTP. Uh, our forward IP address, what we'll do is come back over here to Portainer. We're going to find a flame dashboard and grab uh, that IP address right there. And we also want to make note that this is on port 5005 right there. So we'll come back over to Nginx Proxy Manager, paste that in like so. We're going to check all these boxes. Then we'll go to SSL. We're going to find our SSL and check all of these boxes and then click Save. And now if we click dash.dbtech.tips, there we go. So the next thing that we can do, of course, is come over here to uh, there and go to app or we could just go to settings, whatever, and type in password or whatever password we set up in our docker compose.yml file. We can hit enter. And there we are, we are logged in. Let's uh, let's change our theme. Uh, I really like the Tron theme, so let's start with that. And then if we come back, here is our homepage. Uh, and of course we can add applications like we had mentioned before by clicking on add and filling in the blanks here. So let's actually do that just real quick. Um, so we've got a few different applications in here. Let's go to Nginx Proxy Manager and let's type in, uh, let's go to to-do like that. So we'll come over to here. We're going to call this uh, to-do list. We'll put in our URL. Uh, the app description is completely up to you. I don't, I rarely ever use it. Uh, our app icon. So let's, let's actually pop that open and do, let's look for a list. Give this a second to load. There it goes. Yeah, so let's let's use this one. So we're going to type, we're just going to, oops. We're going to highlight that and copy it. We'll come back over to here and we'll paste that in there. And then you can decide, do you want somebody to be able to view it publicly or do you want to make sure people are logged in before they see it? That's completely up to you. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I'm going to click on add new application and there is our to do list. So while we're at it, let's just keep kind of going here. Uh, let's do a password. Oops. Click that. I'm going to grab this. We'll come back over. Uh, we're going to say uh, password manager and then we'll come back over. Let's see. Type in password. I like that icon for this, so we're going to grab that. We're going to come back over to Flame, put that in there and add a new application, and then we can close this. So I just wanted to show a couple of uh, demos on how to add applications there. Of course, if you wanted to, you could uh, go over here to the bookmarks menu and add a category. Uh, we're going to call this um, useful stuff, Oops, like so. Uh, and again, you can decide how you want your category visibility to be set up there. We're going to just add the new category. 
Um, and then you, it will, of course, you can keep adding new categories, but I'm just gonna click close. Uh, I'm going to add a bookmark here. Uh, for this, I'm gonna type in Linode and then HTTPS, oops, uh, linode.com slash dbtech. Our bookmark category will be useful stuff. And then our, um, this is going to be, let's do, um, let's do another server. And we're gonna use this one because it's a little different. We're gonna call it server network. We're gonna go ahead and paste that in there and click on add. And there we go. Let's go back. And here we can see we've got our applications. We've got our bookmarks. And of course, if I click on that, and of course it'll bring me right over to any of these things that we click on just like so. So there you go. There is how to set up one of many different dashboards that are available out there. I really do like Flame Dashboard. I've been using it for a long time and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, of course, let us know in the comment section down below what you think about it. If you've got questions or comments, we'd love to be able to uh, let you know what our thoughts are on your thoughts. So, uh, thought us down below in the comment section. Um, of course, hit the description down below where you'll find a link to jump over to Linode and get $100 in free credit to try out the Linode service free of charge for 60 days. But I think with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and I will talk to you guys in the next video.